good morning, everyone, and welcome to our 9-11 memorial ceremony. We appreciate uh, you all being here with us today, and particularly all the first responders that are here in attendance with us this morning. Uh, to open the ceremonies, I would like to invite up uh, Firefighters Chaplain Reverend Bill McCoy for the opening invocation. Let us pray. Merciful God, we are again reminded this day of the attack on our country 16 years ago. We grieve still for all those who lost their lives in these attacks. We sympathize with their loved ones who still miss them. And so we pray for their strength, their courage, and their consolation. Have mercy upon them, we pray, O Lord. We remember too the countless acts of heroism and selfless love that were done that day and in the days that followed, and so we give you thanks. Be with us, Lord, we pray. Be with the personnel of our fire services, with those who serve in law enforcement and with first responders everywhere. Be with the men and women of our armed forces and their families. Defend them, we pray, O Lord, with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and their temptations. Grant them courage in the perils they face and a sense of your abiding nearness wherever they may be. This we ask in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. At this time, uh, we'd like to invite up for the national anthem, Deanna Maselli, uh, not just a Brockton resident, but daughter of a Brockton firefighter, to perform our nation's national anthem. Details! Artists! Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets That our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? Order. Tiana, thank you. That was outstanding. Uh, please be seated. We, uh, I'll just remind everyone a few moments in advance that at exactly 8.46, we'll be pausing for a moment of silence at the exact moment that the first tower was struck. I do want to take a moment to uh, recognize our many uh, elected officials that are here in attendance with us this morning uh, from our state legislature, uh, State Representative Michelle Dubois, State Representative Claire Cronin, State Representative Jerry Cassidy are all here in attendance with us for this morning's ceremonies. Uh, from the Brockton City Council, we have uh, Ward 7 City Councilor Shirley Asak, Ward 6 City Councilor Jack Lally, Councilor at Lodge, Moses Rodriguez. Did I get everybody? Oh no, I've got Mark. I'm sorry, Mark, I had you. I was still thinking Council. Uh, from the Southeastern Regional School Committee, Mark Lindy. And for all those others that are here in attendance with this morning, we truly appreciate your being here. Okay. 
each year at this time, uh, you know, we have the opportunity to reflect on the events of now 16 years ago and how much all of our lives changed uh, here in the United States that uh, we think differently today than we did 16 years ago when we were faced with such a large-scale act of terrorism on American soil. And I think up until that date, most of us, I know I did, I think, took for granted the peace and safety that we enjoy. And we appreciate everything that's been done from our armed forces uh, around the world uh, to our first responders here at home to continue to, uh, to keep us safe. But our perception has changed now. We look at the world differently. We look at life here differently. And we think, you know, just outside of Boston, it was only a little over four years ago with the Marathon bombing that we were struck very close to home with an act of terrorism. So it's a time for us to reflect on that, to think about the lives lost 16 years ago. I was up early this morning and it kind of crossed my mind that thinking about all of the people, the victims, 3,000 victims and first responders and everyone that was directly impacted on the morning of 9-11 exactly 16 years ago, that 16 years ago, not one of them saw it coming. I mean, that's, that's the nature of an act of terrorism. And as people were getting up and going to work or school or to get on a jet, no one had any idea what was about to unfold in the, in the coming few hours and the impact that it would have on our entire nation. So we still continue to remember all of those families and all of those impacted. And the acts of heroism that took place that day and I've said it many times, I'll say it again, that from the seat I get to sit in right now, uh, I witness first responders in harm's way all the time. And I have an opportunity to truly appreciate what our firefighters, police officers, and EMTs mean to us on a daily basis. And I've witnessed dozens and dozens of acts of heroism by our own first responders. Uh, it's just that most of us don't see it happening. Uh, but I've had a seat in the front row for the past three and a half years, and I do see it happen, and I do truly appreciate the service and sacrifice of uh, all of our first responders here in the city of Brockton. I also ask everyone to, this morning, remember those in Florida. They're our first responders in harm's way right now in Florida and I'm sure Georgia and the adjoining states very soon. I heard a report overnight of uh, two police officers' lives lost out in the storm uh, overnight. So again today, our first responders are in harm's way and we think of all of those in Florida, the first responders and all of the millions of people in Florida impacted by Hurricane Irma. And I don't think there's any more fitting place for this ceremony to take place than in the shadow of the Strand Theater Fire Memorial. Because those of us here in Brockton, a full six decades prior to 9-11 as a city, felt the pain of the loss of life of firefighters, a large group of firefighters and all those that were hurt and all the Brockton families that were directly impacted. So I, I've got to believe that if there's any city anywhere that truly understands 9-11 and has some sense as to what that meant to the city of New York and its first responders, it's the city of Brockton. As for, for decades earlier, the loss of firefighters' lives at the Strand Theater has been a critical part of our city's history and a part of our city's history that we continue to remember every day. We're coming up on 846, so I'm going to interrupt my remarks, ask everyone if they could please rise if they're not, and I ask everyone to please observe a moment of silence in memory of all those lost 16 years ago today.
And at this time, while we're still standing, I ask the Brockton firefighters' pipes and drums to please perform Amazing Grace. Thank you. I ask everyone to please be seated. At this time, I'll invite uh, up to the podium uh, the Brockton Chief of Police, John Crowley, for some remarks. Good morning. Let me begin by recognizing the loss of life on the morning of September 11, 2001. The years have passed, but the memories still linger. 9-11 has become a day of recognition for police, fire, EMS first responders, and EMTs. But let us not forget the tragic loss of life on that day. I thank all of you for the job you do. Be safe and God bless you. Now, if we could please invite up uh, Brockton Fire Chief Mike Williams. Throughout our history, certain images become ingrained in our minds. <clears throat> For all of us, the events of September 11, 2001 will forever live in our memories. We shall never forget the images of planes flying into the World Trade Center or smoke rising from the Pentagon. We shall never forget the courage and compassion of men and women racing into burning buildings to save the innocent or those heroes who died in the Pennsylvania field. On this, the 16th anniversary of that tragic day, we remember once again how ordinary human beings living ordinary lives, reacted with extraordinary heroism. When without warning and in an instant, they were thrown face to face with the most fundamental question of human existence. There is no doubt 
that the horrific acts of a few were surpassed by the heroic acts of many. In total, nearly 3,000 lives were lost that day. In that number were 343 New York City firefighters and 71 New York City and Port Authority police officers, men and women who paid the ultimate sacrifice, the giving of their lives to try and save others. I ask that you please also remember today the victims of the hurricanes in Texas and Florida, in addition to the men and women of our military, who protect not only us, but also our freedom every day. Thank you and God bless America. This time I'll join the two chiefs in laying the memorial wreath at the base of the American flag here at City Hall Plaza. At this time, I'd like to invite up a Chaplain McCoy for a closing prayer. Again, let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for the bravery. We give you thanks for the compassion. We give you thanks for all of those who see the sacredness of life. All of those who are willing to sacrifice their lives to honor life and to honor you. Lord, we ask that you would grant to our community and to our country and to our world the peace which turns swords into plowshares, the peace of those who walk this earth humbly, the peace that embraces your world from the hard wood of the cross and unites us all in all times and places as one human family. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. This will conclude our ceremonies, but we are going to invite uh, the Brockton firefighters, uh, pipes and drums to perform for us once again as the conclusion of our ceremonies. And I thank each and every one of you for joining us here this morning. Thank you. <laughs>